You are watching TFI. Uh, yeah, let's just do this. So I'm, uh, I'm joined by two of the chiefs from Autodesk uh, as we debate a hot topic at the moment. Uh, if you guys just want to quickly reduce yourselves and uh, we, can, we can get started. We'll start with you, Steve. Sure. My name is Steve Hooper. I'm the Vice President and General Manager for Fusion 360. Um, so we also run our other manufacturing product lines that include technologies like PowerMill, NetFab and Moldflow. But we have a particular focus on integrating a lot of those technologies together inside of Fusion to give our customers a completely integrated hybrid manufacturing experience. Yep. Uh, and I'm Derek Cooper. I'm the senior director for what we call the product design solution. So that's Inventor and Vault. And then Steve and I partner together on the product design and manufacturing collection with kind of a joint ownership of, of the responsibilities there. Okay, thanks very much. So there's a, there is a good reason why we've got these two guys on the line, the two head honchos of uh, Fusion 360 and Inventor. So uh, there's, been, there's been a bit of a, a hot potato being kicked around for quite some time, really, since the day that Fusion 360 first surfaced. And I think different people have different perspectives to this, uh, this, whole, this, this whole situation. So from my point of view, the, the way I've seen it over the years is Fusion's received a lot of, uh, of, of development. It started off as, as an excellent product and has developed over time into an even better product. And it's starting to sort of rub shoulders with, with Autodesk Inventor. And depending on who you speak to, and in my case, that's a lot of the guys on the ground. They're, you know, they're paying Inventor subscribers. They're paying product design collection subscribers. It could be in small businesses. They could be in big businesses. But the general feeling that I get from almost everyone that I speak to really is that Fusion is is becoming an alternative to the tool that they're using, which is Inventor. And to a lot of people, that's okay. But to some other people, there's different perspectives on this and that the, the, the potential of change in the design tool that they're using is, you know, it's going to cost them money. It's going to require, you know, retraining of staff. They've got a big data bank of files, which, or what do they do with that? So, the, the potential that there could be a new software tool in the making, potentially replacing the one that they're using is just causing some concern and a little bit of discomfort out there. So recently, Autodesk released their annual showreel videos. Uh, I released a video on that discussing the content of the design and manufacturing showreel where I spotted the omission of Autodesk Inventor from that showreel. And obviously that's the design and manufacturing showreel. Historically, Inventor's always been the, fra the flagship design and manufacturing package within Autodesk and I just started to read between the lines possibly a little bit too much and that's kind of why we've all come together today just, just to talk about this what is happening with Fusion 360 what is its intent for the future is it challenging inventor is there long-term plans here for a switch over let's just put this discussion to bed once and for all and just, just get it out in the open and, and, and air the laundry if you like so uh, Steve have you got any any thoughts and feelings on people's concerns with what's What's going on with Fusion 360 and where it's headed? Yeah, sure. So um, maybe let's start with the video. Uh, probably a, a bit of an oversight on our perspective. We hadn't intended it to be interpreted that way. Um, one of our core missions for Fusion is to really deliver a hybrid manufacturing experience. So Autodesk's always been strong in design. Invent is an excellent example of the investments that we've made in design and continue to make. So we've got absolutely no intent in slowing down our investment in Inventor. I'll let Derek talk much more about that. Um, the two of us partner together closely on that. What we're trying to do with Fusion is to really um, integrate all of our manufacturing technologies together to deliver a hybrid manufacturing experience. So, like I said, Autodesk's always been traditionally strong in design. We've made significant investments in manufacturing, and one thing we were trying to do with the showreel this year was to really just emphasize the investments that we've made in that space, um, just to create better market awareness of just how strong our technology is in manufacturing. And as a consequence, you saw a lot of imagery from the manufacturing portfolio. So it wasn't just yeah. Fusion. You saw examples from things like Power Inspect, Power Mill, NatFab. They were all integrated into that video. I think it was probably an oversight on our perspective that Inventor wasn't focused on in that video. It certainly wasn't any sort of indication of our internal investment structure at all. Um, the second thing we're trying to do with Fusion is build a digital pipeline. So we're trying to integrate 
various elements of um, design, topology creation, simulation and manufacturing expertise. And the reason we're doing that isn't to try and replace any other product in our portfolio because you could apply the same argument to things like power mill, net fab and mold flow. The reason that we're doing it is by building that digital pipeline, what we can start to do is automate elements of it. And one of our key missions this year is to deliver an automation in the form of generative design. And so to create a generative design environment, you have to have the ability to create topology, simulate and validate its behavioral characteristics, and also understand the manufacturing processes that will constrain the types of topology or geometry that you can produce. And so you want to be able to do all of that together in one single digital environment and do it on the cloud where you can do it iteratively so that you don't just get one solution, you get a thousand solutions that um, engineers and designers can then navigate in a solution domain to pick the right trade-off. So that's really what we're trying to do with Fusion, integrated hybrid manufacturing, um, put that together with generative design um, to deliver automations to the market that we think will be fairly revolutionary, transformative for the design and manufacturing marketplace. Now, what we're also doing is delivering that in the design and manufacturing collection. And Derek and I have worked very closely together to make sure that there are really strong associative workflows in both directions between Inventor and Fusion. So you can take Inventor data into Fusion, do some generative design, manufacture it, take the output from that, put it back into Inventor. And those workflows are associative. So we made a significant investment on both sides of the portfolio to do that. We wouldn't have done that if we weren't convinced that there was a long, long lifespan for both product sets. And we include both of them in the collection so that our customers can use whichever tool suits their requirement to round out their product development process. So that's why we think the product design and manufacturing collection is such a strong value proposition. Yeah, and I'll okay. just add, uh, I had a couple things there too. So uh, si similar on Inventor, we're going after kind of our hardcore professional design and engineering community. So we're making investments in performance, the experience. We just posted Inventor 2020 today, brand new look and feel, lots of workflow improvements there. But we're also partnering with Steve to put some manufacturing capabilities that existing customers that, that aren't quite ready to use to leverage the cloud because they, they're just existing processes and infrastructures. We're putting CAM inside of Inventor, we're putting simulation inside of Inventor, where it makes sense. But, but things like generative, it just makes much more sense to keep that on the cloud so that we can do this parallel computing, so that we can do these infinite solutions rather than iteratively and worry about hardware restraints. So it, it is a, a conscious decision where to invest and where to put, but, but there is sharing of technologies in, 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 both, in both products. And that's yeah. natural, right, Neil? I mean, I think, um, you know, we've talked about this in the past. You've seen this historically, like there are things that Inventor does. And I, I've worked on Inventor too, so I'm just as passionate about it yeah. as anyone else. And, and Derek's managed much of the technology that's in my portfolio now, so he's just as passionate about what I'm doing. So we, we have a shared interest. But, you know, we've seen some overlaps like this in the past. There were many questions that were fielded like this about AutoCAD many mm -hmm. years where people were convinced we were trying to kind of end the days of AutoCAD. And of course, you can see that that couldn't be further from the truth. There are things that Inventor does that AutoCAD does. Um, it's just a kind of natural overlap in some of our portfolio. Um, you know, that's why we provide these tools and technologies together in a collection so that people aren't forced into making a decision. They can get the best out of any one of those tools. Yeah, I think that's what people are hoping to hear. The, the, the overlap's obvious. The market material is quite strongly aligned as well. That They seem to be quite obviously pitching towards the same product design, manufacturing market. Inventor can do product design. It can you know, leverage manufacturing techniques as, as can Fusion 360. And it, 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 people can rightly see that these two products are sort of heading on a trajectory towards the same end goal. And as long as people are... are comforted and reassured that if they've made a strong investment in Inventor, that that's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. I don't see anyone really having a problem with that. Me personally, I've got absolutely no problem with the rise of Fusion 360. It can mm -hmm. be the best product in the world. Not a problem whatsoever for me, as long as Inventor still has it's uh, it still has a, a strong backbone, still has strong development behind yeah. it, still has investment. Absolutely. Oh, I can, I can tell you. So here's one thing that maybe will help reassure people that watch this is that um, from an Autodesk perspective, it just wouldn't make financial sense, right? So um, as, much, as much as I'll advocate how much we care about our customers, and we do, 
Um, I think also the financial justification will reassure people. It just mm. doesn't make financial sense for us to build another product that does the same thing an existing product does and try to migrate people from one to the other. What we're trying to do is expand the market opportunity for the company as a whole. And part of the way that we do that is we make tools and technologies more accessible to perhaps people that wouldn't have used them before. So if you're a hardcore you know, industrial machine manufacturer, you're doing large assemblies, um, Inventor is an awesome choice for that type of design problem, right? And then there are some aspects to the market where perhaps they wouldn't have invested in a 3D parametric modeling system before in the past. Um, Fusion's a little more accessible. Obviously, as a standalone solution, it's a bit more cost effective and affordable. And so, for that space in the market that might not mm -hmm. have invested before in the past, we offer a slightly different value proposition. Um, especially for somebody perhaps who's working in a job shop who maybe doesn't need as much design technology and they want to focus more on manufacturing. Fusion's a great solution for that too. So it expands some market opportunities so that the, the user base itself gets bigger. It doesn't mean that the inventor user base gets smaller. It continues to get bigger. The overall pie gets bigger. Inventor share of it gets bigger. And, and we get to attract new customers that perhaps in the past we wouldn't have worked with. And again, I, I keep going back to the collection, but the collection is the solution for anyone who wants to get the best of everything. Um, it just offers them access to all the tools in the portfolio. Yeah. So the idea is that we kind of attract different segments of the market right. to perhaps those that we would have worked with in the past, and we grow the opportunity for the company as a whole without it creating an expense or a lost opportunity for any particular product yeah. in the portfolio. So I guess this is a question for Derek. I think some of the yeah. concerns from from the inventor users is that it's perceived that Fusion's kind of getting all the all the cool stuff. You know, generative design is as genius as that is, and bleeding edge as that is. It's it's cool. It's it's interesting, uh, mm. and it's something that people like to play with. But when they see that going to Fusion, it starts mm. get it gets people's minds turning. You know, and they think, well, why why does an inventor get that? Yeah, yeah. I, and, and we we we've been down this path a couple of times, right? We put topology optimization into Inventor. We actually connected it to the cloud, and and it was successful. People liked it, but they wanted to explore it. But then some of our more traditional customers said, "That's great, but I want I want large assembly performance, and I want drawing standards to be updated. I want um, a better workflow of sheet metal, and I want more capabilities in sheet metal." So we're trying to balance between. Uh, keeping the customers that, that depend on Inventor every single day to, to be as great as it is, and also those that want to explore new technologies. And it just seemed more logical to put generative in, in a cloud solution because it leverages that, that computational power of the cloud. If, if we tied that to Inventor, we absolutely could. It just didn't seem like the right choice. And you know, we'll, we'll see how the market reacts. But, but so far, creating this pipeline, this ANYCAD pipeline between Inventor and Fusion seems like the logical choice for us. And so far the response from customers has been positive. But but I see why people, you know, they can look behind the scenes and like I think that's what Steve and I are here to, to set the record straight. Don't look behind the scenes. It's it's you know what you see is kind of what 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 our intent is to, to the market. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear from Inventor twenty twenty, which like you say it is uh, the embargoes released today that's just come out. All the what's new videos are hitting the shelves and the the effort that's gone into that product is it's mind blowing really the team has done a sterling effort with it and uh, the, you're right they're focused on all the areas that are kind of really matter there's no there's no fluff there there's no there's no sexy new tools that really nobody needs uh, right. stuff that people want so uh, i think that uh, you know the the continued investment in that's pretty clear so yeah i think um i think that's that's made it pretty clear I th from my point of view i think in the in the long term as the two products do develop especially fusion develops further i think autodesk should possibly concentrate on making a clearer separation between mm -hmm. the two. Say a new startup company comes out and they need to make a choice. Maybe the collection's a little bit out of their reach mm -hmm. and they need to make a point of product choice. Currently, I don't know if the market material makes a clear enough distinction between the two. Steve, do you think that's something that the Fusion team could yeah. maybe yeah, work on a little bit? To we'll continue to iterate on it. And, and you'll see that we'll have a stronger and stronger focus on you know, delivering that hybrid experience. Yeah. Um, so I think you'll see us focus more and more on that. Um, and it, it'll continue to evolve um, as we deliver the market to the message. And, you know, the, I would say to any, any inventor user that's watching, um, just know that we are just as passionate about Inventor as we are Fusion. We're absolutely committed to it. We're proud of what we've built as an organization. 
And we absolutely intend to continue just as much rabbit investment in that area of the portfolio as we do fusion. Um, fusion we're excited about. It's, uh, it offers us an opportunity to experiment with a lot of new we see a lot of disruptive trends mm -hmm. in the manufacturing space. If you think about some of these new manufacturing processes like hybrid manufacturing with additive workflows and you know more accessibility to NC controlled equipment and robotics, it gives us a platform on which to experiment and then to use that information as part of our generative design and automation workflows. So we, we're excited about the opportunity to experiment there and you'll see that evolve and I'm sure that you'll see more and more differentiation between the two as we go on. And above all, we just want your viewers to know whether they're inventor customers, fusion customers, mm -hmm. customers, NetFab customers, or users of the collection, that we greatly value their, you know, their loyalty. We greatly value their customer, and we just want them to get the best out of our portfolio. So just, just know that we're trying to do the right things to serve their needs. And we're excited about it. There's never been a better time to work in design and manufacturing. There are some amazing technology um, disruptions coming that are already here in many cases. It's a time for designers, engineers, production engineers to be super excited about what we're doing. There's so much more technology that Derek and I are working on right now that we are so excited to lift the covers on. You're going to see a tremendous amount from us at AU this year. Mm -hmm. There's sorts of things that you're going to be delighted to see. So, um, you know, if we miscalculated what we focused on in one video, please excuse that mistake. Yeah. We apologize for it. It wasn't an intended one. Um, just know that we've got some hot technology to show you later this year, and we were super excited to, to just get on and develop it on your behalf. Yeah, cool. But one last thing. There's, uh, I'm pretty sure I know what the answer to this is, but there's, there's no corporate initiative to, to hold back any technology from Inventor with the intention of, accelerating fusion is inventor got free reign to put in whatever it wants to regardless of fusion's existence 100 percent full reign and the decisions are made you know between steve and i and our teams and, and with direct feedback from customers and trying to strike that balance and, and you know we don't want to keep over hyping the collection but that's in our minds that that's that is the vehicle that we we offer the tools together so so that there is this this balance and we're not holding something back from one group or the other. If you want them both, they're absolutely there and the, and the data is to, you know, intended to, to flow smoothly between the two. So Derek and I are basically joined at the hip. If one of us fails, the other one fails. So <laughs> That's right. It's not in our That's interest. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. All right. Well, thanks very much, guys. I think that's, I think that's cleared up. That's definitely put my mind at rest. I think you've both stated a clear intent that both products are here to stay and the investment in both products is strong and it will be into the future. So thank you very much guys for your time. And uh, if there's, there's anything else that you guys want to add before we, before we wrap up? No, the only thing I would say is Neil, thank you for taking the time to reach out. So it, you know, it was great. You reached out, you asked for a point of view and you were open to giving us the time to talk to your viewers yeah. and followers. Really appreciate it. And yeah, so I want to thank you. Thank you as well, Neil. And I think, you know, thanks to the customers we, we get sometimes it's not we, with all of our good intent. It's not always easy to communicate. It's a it's a pretty big portfolio and there's a lot of things that we do. So calling us out on it is absolutely reasonable. And we, we, we welcome the feedback. Right. And, and I think hopefully what you'll see in the 2020 updates is we're responding directly to the feedback, you know, in the different industries and the different types of customers that we have. And, you know, we just want to say thanks. Thanks to everybody for the support. Yeah. Yeah. I want to I want to also say thanks as well to you guys for for your time, especially today. Given that this is launch day, this is probably one of the busiest times of the year for you guys. So thank you for for putting that time aside. But also to the people that watch these videos, because it's it's easy to forget that the people that watch the likes of my channel, I focus on work stuff. That's what we're, it's design mm -hmm. and manufacturing. It's work stuff. But the people that subscribe to a YouTube channel and get involved in this kind of thing on YouTube, they are the most dedicated and loyal mm -hmm. and invested Autodesk customers out there. And these are the guys that I'm hearing concerns from. So it's great that you guys are addressing those directly. It's great that they care enough to get involved and to raise those concerns. So I think we've gone full circle here and I think we've, we've pretty much cleared that up. So thank you very much again, guys, for your time. Great. And um, yeah, here's to, a, here's to a great year in 2020. And I'll hopefully see you guys at Autodesk University as well at the end of the year. Definitely. Great. Thanks, Neil. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks.